Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you my top tips for drawing fur in pastels. Now the first one, regardless of the medium that you're working in, is make sure that you've got a good initial sketch. If that outline is accurate to your reference photo, the drawing process is going to be much easier. How many lines you put in for your initial sketch is entirely up to you and down to the personal artist. I don't like putting too many in because I find that more sketch lines can make the initial outline a bit too confusing and harder to follow. However, if you want to add more lines into your initial sketch, that is absolutely fine. There really is no right or wrong answer. Number two, and that's to have a good base layer. Now I like to get my base layers as close to the reference photo as I possibly can. I'm not focusing on the exact colour, but I am mapping in where my lights and my darks are. Especially on something like this cat here where it's got quite distinctive markings, I want to make sure that I'm mapping them in in the right place. Now of course we can alter these base layers as we go with our future layers, but I do find that by mapping them in as accurately as I can at this stage, I'm more likely to follow that reference photo with the additional layers that I add. I also find that this keeps me motivated to continue on with the portrait and carry on through this ugly stage. All portraits go through this stage that we have to in order to build up depth. But if we give that extra time to the base layer, I do find that I can get my details and the fur that much more realistic with the additional depth that I'm able to build. Another reason why I like mapping in my base layers as accurately as I am here is because if I had just one solid colour down from my base layer, I think we have a tendency to rush through that portrait. Whereas, because this is already looking like the ginger cat in the reference photo, I'm a lot more motivated to carry on working with it, and as I say, I'm therefore that much more accurate with the future layers that I put on top. If I put down one single colour for my base layer, you're in that ugly stage for far longer. Number three, and that is the fur direction. So regardless of whatever animal it is that we're drawing, we really want to make sure that we are drawing the fur direction in the right way. Really study that reference photo. If you're working on a tablet, zoom into that and really make sure that your pencil strokes are following that photo closely. The reason being, if we alter the fur direction in any way, we are ultimately then going to change the bone and muscular structure of that animal and it then ultimately won't look as much like that dog or horse, cat, whatever it is that you might be drawing. Now the fur direction and how it travels is going to vary depending on the coat length and we'll talk about that shortly but that is gonna vary depending on the breed. Now, the shorter coated dogs, you're gonna potentially see more of that change in direction within the fur. Longer coated dogs, you are still gonna see it, but you then need to elongate your pencil strokes. And take Jake the Corgi here, for example. Where he is panting, he's smiling, it's gonna therefore create creases on the sides of his face on the cheek area. So I wanna make sure that I've got that fur direction and the way that it changes in place in order to replicate that from the reference photo. Something else that fur direction will affect is the expression and emotion in that portrait. Now what I mean by that is, Jake here is smiling, he's panting. I wanna make sure that I capture that. If I have my fur direction in slightly the wrong way, it's not going to resemble that look within the fur. I want it to look like the skin there is scrunched up a little bit on the cheek because he is smiling. So the fur direction can really change every element of your portrait. I speak about it a lot in all of my tutorials because it is really important. And that brings me on to tip four, and that is fur length and thickness. So still following the points in tip three, I wanna then make sure that I am getting the length of the fur right and the thickness of those pencil strokes. Now that is gonna vary depending on the animal that you are drawing. Take this Cocker Spaniel ear. So this was a focus study that I did on Patreon. It was all done in real time, but I had to make sure that I followed that fur texture in that reference photo. I therefore had to make sure that my pencil strokes were considerably longer, that they still followed the tips in number three with the fur direction. All of these different elements are things that we need to be focusing on at the time of creating those individual pencil strokes. Now the thickness of the details again is something that is also really important. Some of the fur here is clumped together, I therefore need to make sure that I am replicating that in my drawing. Now, sometimes working with, with pencils, especially our pastels, is very similar in some cases as we're working with a paintbrush, in that the more pressure that you put on that pencil, the more of that pigment is going to transfer onto your paper, and then potentially the thicker your lines are going to be. So it's going to be 
really dependent on how you move that pencil and that is something that I cover in depth in my Patreon tutorials. Because it's considerably slower and most of the time real time footage, I'm able to show you exactly how to create those desired pencil strokes for the fur texture that we're after. So number five, and that is your contrast. Now again, this is something that I talk about a lot in all of my tutorials. Now, quite often we worry about the exact color that we're trying to get in that reference photo, but more importantly, we should be focusing on the contrast. Now the reason being, let's say Tom here, the Cavalier. So I was asked to do a Cavalier tutorial for Patreon and the colors of the reference photo, because I was given a few to use, they were slightly different. I chose the photograph for this portrait because I really liked the tilted head expression and the colours in the ears and the fur were stunning. However, his colour varied depending on the light source, so if it was a sunny day or a cloudy day, all of these things are going to change the colour of that fur. In some cases he had a lot more of the bluer colours, whereas with this, because it was a sunnier day, we got more of our magentas and purples in the black fur. Now, of course, I still want to go for close with my colour, but it's the contrast that make this portrait realistic. Now, this was a small portrait as well, so this was only 6 by 8 inches, which for a head and shoulder single portrait like this, I'm still able to get a nice amount of detail. But it looks realistic because I've got my contrasts right. The black fur looks really dark, where the darker shadowed areas on his face are, and then I've got my highlights within the fur nice and bright. The eyes, the highlights there, they're really bright, they're nice and vibrant. So all of these contrasted details are what make the fur realistic rather than the exact colour. Now of course we want to be going as close to the colour as we can from the reference photo and you can use some apps that can help with that so eyedropper tools and colour pickers are good resources to use if the colour is something that you are struggling with. But the most important thing to remember is your contrast. If you get your shadows as dark as they need to be and the highlights as bright as they need to be, your artwork, your portrait will look far more realistic even if the colour is slightly off. So take this as an example, so both here are my drawings, the one on the left is the one that I had did that is unedited and on the right I've changed it more of the bluer colour, so let's say the reference photo did contain more of those blues if it was taken on an overcast day. What I have done is I've adjusted the contrast, I'm not really focusing on the colour here but you can see where my darks are not as dark and my highlights are not as bright, the one on the right looks flatter, it doesn't have as much of that three dimension that we're after. And that's not the colour, it still looks like Tom even though he's got more of the blues in the fur, it just doesn't look as realistic because the contrasts are not as sharp. What also happens then is you run the risk that the black fur doesn't look black, this now looks on the right more like a greyer version. So it, the contrasts are really important and again that's why I cover it in such depth in the tutorials. So last up is tip six and that's working from dark to light. Now I have chosen this yellow Labrador here for this clip as the example because this is the exception to the rule. Now anything with art, there is no set rules for anything, there is always going to be the one case where you need to use a slightly different approach. But when you're working with pastels, we have that lovely luxury of being able to layer our lights on top of our darks. So for the most of the time, I will be working from dark to light, I'll put down a darker base layer and build up my lighter details with my additional layers. However, as I say, there is always a exception to the rule. Now when I've got a lighter coated dog, like a yellow Labrador here, I will work from the opposite and do my lights to darks. However, like what you've seen here, I'm adding in my darker shadows, but they are in those specific places that I've seen on the reference photo. I haven't gone with one set dark base layer from the very beginning. The reason for this case is I would run the risk of making that dog far too dark. So when you have got a lighter coated animal, I do try to make sure that I put my lighter base layers down first and then I build my darker details and my darker layers on top. Now how you like to build your layers are going to be very unique depending on the artist. It is going to be personal preference and you will find the way that you like to layer with your pastels the more that you draw. But if you're finding your fur detail is not showing up when you're working with your pastel pencils, it's usually because your base layer is not dark enough. Now, as I say, that is when you're working more with your darker base layers. 
always be a little bit more cautious if you're working on a dog such as this colour but still make sure when you are working light to dark that you get your contrast in place. I'm adding my lighter details here on top just to make sure that my highlights are as bright as they need to be. Just because I'm working with a lighter base layer doesn't mean that I don't have to add these lighter details at my future layers. So I really hope these tips in this video were useful. If they were, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you want to get notified of future content, hit the subscribe and the bell button. And as I've mentioned, I will link my Patreon in the description below if my slower tutorials are of use. I do also have a Patreon library on my website so that you can see the list of tutorials that are available there before you sign up. If you've got any questions, anything art related, pop them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer them and I'll be uploading another video very soon.